Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at uh, another torrent program. Uh, this one is called uh, rtorrent uh, slash rutorrent. Uh, they kind of work in conjunction with each other. Uh, one is the front end, one is the back end. Uh, normally you'd have to install, install them separately, but uh, what we're gonna do today is actually install them together uh, using just one quick uh, stack here. Now, originally, if we come over to my desktop here, so here we are, this is uh, RU or rtorrent dash rutorrent uh, from Diameter. Uh, he's the developer that put the, all this together uh, based on uh, stable releases from GitHub. So should be fairly current stuff. Uh, this was updated, as you can see, eight days ago. And then below that, they've got some uh, different tags that you can use for when you're downloading this, whether you want to use a 32-bit version, uh, a 64-bit version, Alpine, Ubuntu. Uh, there are different options there. Now, the one thing I will say is I don't believe that this is going to be compatible with ARM processors. So uh, Raspberry Pis, Banana Pis, uh, basically any of the ARM processor uh, single board computers aren't going to work for this. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. Now, if we scroll down, you'll see all of the stuff that it's going to install uh, and, and, and monitor and everything. Uh, we've got some stuff where it talks about uh, the different ports that we're gonna use, <clears throat> um, talking about uh, DHT ports, web ports, things like that. Uh, that's all pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, so if we scroll down, there are some additional things that we can uh, put in here, like user IDs, group IDs, um, stuff for logs, um, stuff for increasing the amount of memory available, uh, things like that. So if we scroll down a little further, uh, we've got a couple of different options here uh, for how we can run this, either secure or insecure. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to run it insecure, meaning we're gonna run everything basically on port 80 uh, versus port 443. Uh, you could set this up on traffic if you wanted to and have access to it remotely, but uh, that's not really the, the scope of this. Uh, if you're interested in that, maybe I can make a follow-up video uh, showing how to add this to traffic. But for right now, uh, we're just going to install this just as a local uh, install, just to download stuff. In fact, I'll show you uh, that it works uh, here in a little bit when I ins when I download an Ubuntu desktop uh, torrent file. So, uh, so basically, like I said, uh, by default, it comes with just these shell commands, and they're fine. They work really well. Uh, it's great because you don't necessarily have to use certain versions of <clears throat> uh, of stacks or anything like that. You can just run this command and it'll work. But based on some of the feedback I've received from you guys when I've done stuff like this, uh, you guys prefer stacks. Stacks are definitely easier to read. Uh, I agree with that. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the stack I put together uh, based on uh, this script back here. Uh, we're going to use version 2.1. Uh, version 2 would probably work as well. But um, honestly, I just built this off another template I had. 2.1 should be just fine. Below that, we've got services. We're gonna use rtorrent dash rutorrent. We've got the image in there. We've got our container name. Uh, we've got two different volumes in here, actually. So the first one is gonna be a configuration volume. Uh, if you have watched my other videos, you know that I like to have a configuration folder and then have all my applications drop all of their configuration stuff in a separate folder uh, in a configuration area. Just easier to keep every all your configuration stuff kind of in one general area for easier management. So. Um, I've already got that folder created and I'll show you that here in just a moment, but also we need to have a folder created for where our torrents will download. So we are going to create that uh, and that should give you a pretty good idea of how to create uh, the configuration folder uh, that's right before that. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to talk about some ports. Uh, by, de by default, this was on port 80. Um, I switched that to port 8280. Again, I've already got stuff running on port 80, so uh, it can be remapped, so I remapped it. Uh, below that, we've got, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, we've got ports for uh, DHT UDP and incoming connections. Again, both of those uh, can be remapped. Uh, I don't need to, you probably don't either. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave those as they currently are. And then restart unless stopped. Uh, always good to have that in there in case something goes wrong, it'll automatically restart the container. So uh, with that being said, uh, what I'm gonna do is actually uh, come over here to Open Media Vault. <clears throat> Now I'm in shared folders here on the left side. And here you can see that I've got this configuration folder or this config folder set up. Uh, what we need to do here though, is add a torrent folder. Uh, you can call it torrents, you can call it downloads. Uh, you can call it whatever you wanna call it. Uh, just know that you will need to create this folder. Um, so below that, we're gonna select my external hard drive. Uh, we're gonna say everybody has read and write access to it. And then we'll click save. Then we're gonna jump over here to uh, SMB CIFS 
and uh, we're, we're gonna wanna make sure that this is enabled. If it's not, toggle this so that it's green, then click save, and then go up here to shares, um, and then click add. Click the drop down here, go to torrents, um, the, where it says public, switch that to only guests, um, and then go ahead and click on save. Um, once you've got that for both the torrents and the config folder, uh, go ahead and come up here to, up to the top in this yellow bar, uh, at the top right where it says apply. Go ahead and click that and then click yes. And then we'll just give this a minute uh, to go in and create those folders and make the necessary changes on the server it needs to make. Okay, so now that that's done, what we wanna do is actually come back over here to shared folders. Um, and we're gonna need some of the information that's in here, these absolute paths for both config and torrents. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy uh, this, uh, this stack that I created. We're gonna go over to Portainer. We'll go to Stacks, we'll click on Add a New Stack. We're just gonna paste that in there and we're gonna give it a name. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste that in there. So what we need to do next is actually make sure that these volumes are correct. Uh, the first one we're gonna take a look at is the config folder here. Uh, what we can do is come back over here to our shared folders. Uh, right here, you should be able to do this in Chrome or Firefox. I use Chrome though. Uh, so if you right click and go to inspect, you may go to inspect element in different browsers, um, but then you can just double click right here and copy, then come back over, paste that in there. And then you'll want to append this because what we've just done there is, is put it in the root of the uh, config folder. What we want to do is create a folder for RU torrent. Uh, so I'm just going to call this RU torrent like that. And then we'll come back over and we'll do the same thing for torrents, but it's okay to just leave this in the root folder because all of our torrents can just go uh, in there. It will automatically create the folders it needs uh, in that root folder. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there. All of this looks good now. Um, so what we can do is actually scroll down and click on deploy the stack. Uh, we'll give this uh, just a second. It shouldn't take too long. Um, but once that's done, what we can do is go to the RU torrent, uh, come over here to make sure that this is running. Uh, as soon as this stops, and it should be very, very quick, uh, what we can do is actually just come over here and do 8180, uh, I believe is what port I put it on. Uh, let me double check that. Oh, 8280, I'm glad I double checked. 8280, and we'll go ahead and say go. And we'll give this page just a second to load here. And here we've got our interface. So uh, from here, what we can do uh, is we can come up to the top, click on the little globe that's up there, uh, choose a torrent file. Uh, again, I've got uh, an Ubuntu torrent right there. Uh, so we're just gonna download an open source operating system. We'll click on add file. Uh, here we can see that it says it was added. Uh, we can close that. Uh, it looks like this is downloading. Uh, so that's good. It looks like we've got a download speed of one and a half megs. Uh, so let's go ahead um, and come over uh, and take a look here. So let's do double backslash uh, and then we'll go to our torrent folder. And here you can see that Ubuntu desktop is downloading. Uh, we're getting a decent uh, download speed there. Um, so that just tells us that everything here is working. Uh, of course, you can go in uh, to the different settings um, and change uh, your uh, your ports, your upload speeds, your download speeds. You can uh, be pretty granular in how you want to uh, manage this container uh, in the container settings themselves uh, in the graphical user interface. Okay guys, there's how to set up RU Torrent and RTorrent together, uh, just using one container versus two, uh, the way you may normally have to do that. Uh, this actually seems to work really, really well. Uh, fairly lightweight, easy to set up, uh, and overall, I think just a good way to go with torrents if you don't wanna use uh, MicroTorrent or uTorrent or any of the other torrent programs that I've shown how to set up here. Uh, this is just another example of how you can do that. So uh, hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, it would help me out a bunch. Um, also, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, you can do things like uh, subscribe. Uh, that would be a cool way to help out. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, there's also coffee links in the description down below, uh, where if you wanna do like a one-time tip, that would be cool. If you wanna become a patron, that's also down there in the link in the description as well. Uh, there are a few different uh, levels at which you can sign up. The five and $10 levels uh, will give you access to a, uh, patrons only discord server where we can just hang out and chat if you want to do that. 
Um, but I think that pretty much wraps everything up. There's also some uh, some merch down there, but with everything going on, things are shipping slowly. So uh, maybe hold off on that for the time being, unless you're watching this in the future and then uh, have at. Uh, so anyway, uh, all of that uh, would be great ways. All of those would be great ways to help support the channel if you want to do that. Uh, if not, that's fine as well. Of course, you're not obligated to do any of those things. So um, I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.